For this video, we're in Edinburgh, Scotland, visiting Merkiston Castle, former home of mathematician John Napier. The castle was built in the mid-1400s, and Napier, who was born in 1550 and died in 1617, lived here at the beginning and at the end of his life. Most math travel videos I make involve places such as neighborhoods, parks, cemeteries, museums, in other words, places fully open to the public. This castle is a bit different. It's part of a university campus, Edinburgh Napier University, and you can certainly walk onto the grounds and see the exterior of the castle, but if you want to see inside, you'll need to either arrange a tour or show up on one of their open days. Notice the bright welcome signs they have out on open days, and the people are at least as welcoming, if not more so. When I was there for Open Doors Days in fall 2023, it was very family friendly and even included activities for kids relating to the castle. But for now, let's get on with this virtual tour. The video opened with views of the front of the castle. Let's go around to the back of the castle where we can see that it is an L-shaped tower house, which is common in Scotland. Taking a closer look, we see very narrow windows. Here you can see a window of this type from the inside. Notice how thick the wall is. Another term for a castle of this type is fortified tower house, and given these narrow windows and thick walls, it is most certainly that. Before going in, let's back up a moment and talk about getting here. If you're coming from the center of Edinburgh, it is possible to walk, but it is a rather long walk. A very convenient option is to take the bus and get out at the Holy Corner stop, so named because there is a church on each corner of the intersection. You can see a couple of the steeples here. The university is a short walk to the west of here along Collington Road. You'd never guess there's a castle inside, given the brutalist architecture on the outside. In fact, you may have missed something else already, something that gets a bit overshadowed by the massive building beside it. Let's step back and take a look. As we approach campus, we pass by a gate topped by lions. I'm not sure how much of this has changed with the renovations over the centuries, but the lions certainly seem to be quite old. As far as I know, they date back to Napier's time or just after. Okay, continuing toward campus, we reach the front of Edinburgh Napier University, where I'm still finding it hard to imagine there is a castle inside. But then we walk through the entrance and there it is. Just to the right of the castle is the main entrance to the university buildings, and turning left as we enter, we find ourselves in the glassed-in walkway that cuts through the L of the tower. You can see the stonework of the castle just outside the window. Looking to the right, you'll see a display case dedicated to John Napier. It contains his coat of arms, information about the castle's history, a cannonball shot into the castle walls in the 1570s, a representation of Napier's black rooster, and examples of calculating devices he invented, including his promptuary and his rods, also called Napier's bones. Continuing our walk down the corridor, we see inside here the stone exterior of the castle that we are about to enter, much renovated, of course. To the left is a sculpted bust of John Napier. I've found that from different angles and in different lighting that he seems to convey a variety of moods. Included in the sculpture is his invention of the calculating rods or bones. Through the stone-edged doorway on the left will enter the castle proper. This picture was taken during a tour that I took in summer of 2021. Here we go. At the top of the steps, we come first to a vestibule that gives way to a faculty lounge 
a dean's office, the front door of the castle, and a large number of stairways for such a small space. Here's the staircase we just came up. And then another on the right. And then one that definitely wasn't here in Napier's time. And then one up ahead to the right, a spiral stair that we'll take a bit later. This video is from Doors Open Day 2023. The painted ceiling is modern. On it, we see the coat of arms of the university, along with its motto, Nisi Sapientia Frustra, without knowledge, everything is in vain. We also see the Napier coat of arms. Just to the left of this vestibule is a room with a plaster ceiling dating to the 1600s. Among the decorations is this sword, scepter, and crown with a cipher of King Charles II. Heading back out and across the vestibule, we'll make our way up the spiral stair to the tower boardroom. The steps have certainly been well-worn over the centuries. Here I am looking to the right, or the north, after entering. And here I'm looking back toward the door Looking back, you can see a minstrel's gallery, which would not have been here during Napier's time. If you look carefully, you'll notice corbels on the wall, indicating that a ceiling has been taken out, making this room two stories tall. Above us is a Renaissance-era painted wooden ceiling, which was common in Edinburgh between 1540 and 1640. I can only imagine what this would have looked like when it was freshly painted centuries ago. This one was painted in 1581 and has quite a variety of images on it. Okay, back out to the spiral stair for a quick visit to the minstrel's gallery. And then we'll continue to the very top, which brings us to the round tower in the corner. There have been rumors over the years that this was the sorceress alchemical laboratory of John Napier. And I really do hate to squash such a romantic notion, but honestly, it's nowhere near big enough to be any such thing. It's simply rooftop access. Speaking of which, I really wanted to get on the roof. I'm writing a novel that involves John Napier, and I wanted to know if he would have been able to see Edinburgh Castle from his home. I asked if we could get out on the roof, but it's not allowed due to safety concerns. Glancing out the window, I realized this was probably for the best. To my delight, however, the guide offered to take us to the roof of the tall university building just across the way, which was a real bonus for a number of reasons. It gave a fantastic view over the city, and did answer my questions about what Napier would have been able to see from the upper story windows of his home. Here we see the volcanic outcrop of Arthur's seat to the east. Of course, none of these modern buildings would have been here in his time. But yes, you can see Edinburgh Castle from here. Again, the modern buildings between would not have been there. Some things that Napier would have been able to see are Edinburgh Castle, St. Giles Cathedral with its unique crown spire. He's also got a view of the Firth of Forth, and on the right of this view we can see Calton Hill. Another plus of being up on this roof is that I could look back down over Merkiston Castle itself and see details from the top. Even though it's been so renovated, I keep finding new details each time I visit that feel, at least to me, evocative of Napier. I hope you've enjoyed this virtual tour of Merkiston Castle. 
and seeing such items there as the display and the sculpture commemorating John Napier, whose home this was and in whose honor this university is named. <laughs>